distribution is a whole nother channel and an animal that I've been having to navigate. But we were fortunate enough that we had, um, you know, many offers um, that, that were great from a first time writer director to come out. Hey, and welcome to Kelly, where we talk about life, your life and my life. And through Kelly, we hope to inspire. I have Robert Eager on the show today, and you're eager. I'm eager to be here. Eager Thank to you for be having here, me. yes. Um, he is the director of the movie Full Count that's going to be in theaters October 25th. 25th. And it is a faith, faith based movie. So, um, what inspired this movie? I actually, in 2001, so we, we actually sh shot it in 2017, so 16 years prior, I had a story and I entered it in Matt Damon and Ben Affleck's online screenwriting contest. Wow. So season one, Project Greenlight, part of HBO, 1,800 entries, and I made the top 50 from a first-time writer who was terrible in English, don't know parts of speech, but I put together a story in script format and that kind of lit the fire, and uh, I carried that thing around for 16 years. And um, with all the production coming to Atlanta, yeah. it made it possible. So really, it was inspired by, uh, I think, some true life stuff that some of my friends were going with. And it just, uh, um, over years, I kept writing and adapting, and uh, finally got to, went into production in fall of 2017. So as a director, um, how did you end up uh, being able to direct. Do you understand camera? Do you understand lighting? Or did you hire people that were, that understood that and you? I had to hire. So without minimizing the daunting task of directing a feature totally. because I didn't know what I was getting into, but mm -hmm. I, I had no schooling, no training. Um, I'd volunteered as an extra a couple times. Mm -hmm. And I really, with all the cast and crew, talented, hardworking cast and crew here in Atlanta, I basically had to surround myself and hire the most talented, hardworking people uh, to pull something like that off. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, had had to hire but, it, and I got very, very lucky. But great, but great that people. is very smart um, to do that because if if you are a director that uh, doesn't uh, understand the camera moves and uh, you can get hijacked really easy by your DP and your cinematographer, and um, so uh, you know keeping that force grounded. Is, it, it's tough, and especially for a, a new filmmaker. And you guys are in uh, theater, so how how did you manage that? We basically, I, I say, got lucky. I don't I don't want to minimize the what what the cast and right. crew did, but it's so hard on an independent film being financed outside of the studios. One, just to get it done, mm -hmm. it is an accomplishment yes. which we celebrated. Distribution is a whole nother channel and an animal that I've been having to navigate. But we were fortunate enough that we had, um, you know, many offers um, that that were great from a first time writer director to come out um, that didn't want to just stick it in their library and go straight to VOD. That was willing to back a very small limited theatrical release. But basically, it was getting done, going through a great edit, adding some awesome music. And really having, I think, ultimately the story resonate with an audience that a distributor stepped up and said, we're willing to make a little bit of a gamble and spend a little bit of money and let's put this out here and see if it can take off. So ultimately it had to be a quality project and I think with the story that um, the now, distributor Now, did you, did you get those connections through the people that were on your crew or did you, how did you connect? You know what I did and it's, it's so many weird cool stories um you know i think i just mentioned music my wife had a friend that worked with her at the hospital and he's a musician that was a drummer in a well-known 80s band but he's gone on to do music and he's in la and we hit each other up and he took the project for nothing and our music score is amazing but just the networking and you talk to one person that knew someone so i didn't have that book of uh connections and that Rolodex, so to speak, but just people that came forward and believed in the project and said, you need to talk to this person and going through that process and trusting it and listening. Um, you know, I, I know that you do a lot of stuff with actors and I know one thing that came out of that whole process was as a first time director, I was really pleasantly surprised um, how many actors had enough courage to come to me because they didn't like the way I had worded a particular sentence. Uh -huh. And they're nervous to talk to directors because mm -hmm. they don't know. Maybe they had a bad experience where they got their head bit off or told to stick to the script. My story changed so much 
seems rewritten because of people coming forward and saying, would you allow me to try it this way? So I think building those connections and believing in the people that you've hired and, and yeah, trust them. Yeah. So. And there are different types of writers and directors. There's there's writers that are like, these are my words, you're going to use these words, which is fine. I mean, if you write it and that's what you want, that's what, what you should get. And then there are writers and directors, my, my husband's much like this, uh, where he wants the point, he wants the purpose. And if if you need to personalize it, you need to change something to personalize it a little bit. Sure. Then you know if, if so. So you're more of a you were more of a collaborative uh, uh, director. I think so. And again, it's it, it's easy to say now looking back on. I do agree with your point though. One thing that you do learn about what they call in the industry making your day. Mm -hmm. You have a location. We were in the middle of two hurricanes, weather, wow. shooting outdoors on a farm. So you have to find that balance between where do you allow to an actor to collaborate and rewrite it without compromising your day because you've got this set built. And I think ultimately what I did was try to get it according to the script and make sure we locked that down and had it my way. And with the extra time, allow them. But I'm telling you, nine out of 10 times, what the actor uh, rewrote or gave me, that's what made the final cut because a lot of them do it. I, I wrote the words. I, I, I became to, you know, believe in the words and it's all I knew. And it's it, you just read it over and over. But to hear two people speak it, it can change and yeah. take a little bit of a life of its own. So I think if you can make your day and allow the freedom to do that, it's the best of both yeah, worlds. Yeah, and I love that you say that, make your day, because, it, because yeah, you can also let too much collaboration and it can, it can take your day instead of make your day. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so uh, we also had um, your lead actor on, uh, John Paul Kakis, and um, uh, so he gave us a you know a little rundown history of the storyline. And now uh, I want it from the the writer sure. director. I'll try to do a little bit better job of uh, pitching. Although did great, but <laughs> this follows a heavily recruited high school baseball pitching phenomenon out of a very poor rural South Georgia farm town, one of those communities where nobody moves and nobody leaves. And he's really struggling as an only child. Do, do I leave the family farm, leave my parents to pursue playing baseball at a higher level? And what ends up emerging is kind of this heartwarming story of perseverance, faith, struggle, you know, to never let go of his dreams. Um, I don't want to give away any spoiler alerts, but there's um, some twists and turns in there as well. So it's got a little bit of an action in it, but ultimately he leaves and pursues baseball. But shortly after leaving, a um, bunch of different things happen that cause him, force him back home and uh, facing a lot of things. And uh, it's, uh, I think, a great story. I think it'll really resonate with a lot of our viewers this day and age that are looking for a heartwarming, feel-good story about perseverance and faith. And um, it'll be released around the World Series. So if you're a baseball fan, it's got a good element of baseball in there too. Yeah, wow. Well, and, and those stories need to be, need to be told because um, often, you know, I always say when you're at the end of your rope and you have nothing else to give, if you can just give a little bit more, there's a gold nugget Amen. right around the bend that, uh, you know, that, that ends up adding to your, to your life. And, and, um, and too often people give up before they, they give up at the edge of the hump. And, uh, Amen. so that sounds like that it's, a, it's a lot like, um, uh, uh, future. What do you have in the future? So after I left, um, the set, I was, um, very blessed to be, handed another script that I didn't write or direct, but it was a local Atlanta project by a very talented husband writing team, Lane and Ruckus Sky, and they were going into production and they had their funding fall through about two weeks before. So I was able to step in on another couple projects. That film premiered at the Atlanta Film Festival this year and won Best Georgia Film and is running the festival circuit and wow. um, recently completed shooting a project. It wasn't in Atlanta, it was in Philadelphia a suspense thriller. So yeah, I've got some other projects um, right now, but I've been focusing a little bit more on the executive producing side on these last couple. So uh -huh. it's been great. It's well, been a good awesome. run. Well, awesome. I love, I, I'm, I'm, people that are on the show, I like to follow your journey. So when you, when you have something else out there, bring it, come sit on the couch Absolutely. And, and share it. Cause this story is about sharing with, with others, our journeys so that they can journey also. Um, uh, I'd love to. 
So a, a tidbit that you can give to a first time director as uh, going back to your first time directing what you learned through the process and what you would give back to yourself. Wow, there, there are so many. I know we don't have a lot of time, but I would just say leave the ego at the door. Um, I've met people that wanted to direct for credit or for a name. Um, I think, as I mentioned earlier, the collaboration, you will truly be humbled by the number of hardworking, talented people that have great ideas. And what I would say is if, if you can afford it and if you can do it, make it a collaboration. You may have wrote it, you may have directed it, you may believe that it's perfect, but I would just say be open to the input of all these people that come together from many different walks of life, from makeup to hair to location, and they're good. If you've hired the right people, trust them, and I think be open. I believe your project will be better for mm -hmm, it. So mm -hmm. I think collaboration, um, it takes, a, it's often said, it takes a village to make a film yeah. and it's a lot of hard work, but I just say be open and listen. I, I love that because it's it's about being a part of that team. And I can tell just from sitting you with you for a short, short period that you are a person that gives praise to your team. Oh, and you. that, that goes a long way and it'll build connections and bonds that truly, I believe that the connections and bonds that we build here are eternal. You don't know where those bonds end and where, the, where, the, where they begin. So thank you for being with thank us. Thank you. Thank you for having me out. Love the show. We hope that this segment educated and inspired you.